No good way to miss a train. Or rather, there's no good thing to do in the moments after missing it. There's no need to do anything. But most of us feel compelled to do some acting. The sort of acting a lot of people do is to try and pretend that they weren't really trying to catch the train at all. That they just happened to be having a bit of a jog in its vicinity and decided to canter to a stop coincidentally at around the same time as a train leaves. Not to worry, I didn't really need to catch that. Ah, I'm really unconcerned and unselfconscious, is the message such people self-consciously try to convey. But I know better than to do that. What I find myself doing instead, which is just as daft if not dafter, is sort of over-exaggerating or at least signalling my frustration at not having caught it. Do you know what I mean? Eye-rolling, cheek-puffing, head-shaking. Oh, the train. Damn, I was hoping to... Now I can't. Oh, me and my luck. What on earth am I hoping to achieve here? I suppose I'm trying to reassure anyone who's just witnessed my ungainly scamper along the platform that I knew I looked silly and that I was doing it for a good, sensible reason. I wanted to catch the train. In case anyone thought I was a weird, hyperactive maniac who might run at high speed for a bit, despite coat, scarf and suitcase, and then suddenly and inexplicably stop. But no, I've done my little train-missing regret pantomime now, so everyone will understand what just happened and how explicable and normal it all was, and feel reassured that I'm not about to publicly self-harm. Phew. Nor is this the only time I do things like this. Every so often, I leave my house and start walking down the street before I realise I've forgotten my phone. Now, if I for some reason was certain that I was completely unobserved, I think what I would do at the moment of realisation is this. Stop, blink with irritation, turn round and walk back to my house. But because I do not know I'm unobserved, instead I feel compelled to stop, tut, exhale theatrically, perhaps even pat my pockets. Pat my pockets. Pockets in which I don't even carry my phone. Just in case some theoretical but minute observer watches me turn back and retrace my steps and thinks, oh dear, that poor man is demented, walking weirdly up and down like a caged tiger. But firstly, why do I care what they think? And secondly, no one thinks like that anyway. If I saw someone turn 180 degrees in the street, so ingrained is the human habit of looking for patterns and telling stories, I would say to myself, oh, he's probably forgotten something, if I noticed at all. And yet we all, dear God, I hope it's all of us, put time and effort into these little dumb shows designed to tell people who aren't looking and wouldn't care if they did things they already know. I even do it when the thing I'm doing doesn't need explanation. If I'm having a cup of tea alone in a cafe, I don't just get up and go lest I outrage the fictional observer with my abruptness. Instead, I ostentatiously finish the tea, look around, maybe even check my watch. Well, it's about time to go, I desperately and silently scream to a universe that could not conceive.